Hey everyone, welcome back to another Tic Tac Taiko. Today we're going to cover the Hanahachi Joe twirl. Back in 2001, I went with a group of Taiko enthusiasts to Japan on the Rhythmix Tour, which is now known as Kasamix. We spent several days on Sato Island at the Kolo Apprentice Center, where we were not only given amazing hospitality, but many workshops taught by senior members of Kolo. We practiced Odaiko, voice, dance, we learned songs, and had rhythmic games. We also learned a song called Hanahachi Jo, taught by Chieko Kojima. Chieko, known for her amazing talent with dance, had taken a popular Hachijo style of taiko and arranged a song that has become very well known in the taiko world. Her grace and fluidity during Hanahachijo is breathtaking, and one thing that always stands out are the multiple bachi twirls she does seemingly without effort. Back in 2001, Hanahachijo was relatively new. And I distinctly remember during one break where a bunch of us were standing around just trying to get the bachi twirls down. The way Chieko was able to do it was impressive and beautifully fluid, and we, well, we were mainly trying not to hit ourselves in the head. The Hana Hachijo twirl is simply an outside backwards wrist twirl. And the awesome news, I covered all of those wrist twirls in great detail last year in a bachi trip video. So, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, or you want a refresher, I have the link down below under this video. Go ahead and check it out, because I am not going to break the wrist twirl itself down in detail for this video. Three things about this video. First, don't feel like you have to start practicing a full extension aside from your body. This is where you want to be, but it's difficult to start. So, start in front. Make it a neutral position, just like we did in the twirl video that I linked below earlier. Second, you don't want to grip hard. In fact, the less you can grip, the better. When I do this twirl in front of me, I want to make it so that, basically, I'm only using two fingers. And at the end, I'm lightly gripping it. When I say grip, I'm using that term loosely. So, it comes up and around, and then my fingertips and my palm are touching it just enough to give it some surface tension that if I pull or if I push it's going to move but it's not going to fall unless I open up. Third, you have two different twirls in Hanahachi Jo, even though they're the same base twirl. There's vertical which goes up and over your head and there's horizontal which goes around and in front of you. It's the same twirl but it's delivered in different ways. So let's call our default twirl position zero, and where we want to get to, to the side, that's 90, 90 degrees. When I start, I've got my elbow bent, and I'm mostly using the lower part of my arm to generate momentum. Right, this, this part's not being used at all. If I can do zero, well, I can do 15. It's a very small difference. If I can do 15, I can do 30. 30 means I can do 45, which means I can do 60, 75, and eventually 90. Now, one thing you'll notice is that, or maybe not, depending on uh, the angle here, I'm starting with my elbow bent. I'm not using any shoulder at all. As I extend, I'm using more and more of my shoulder. It's not that my elbow is locked, but I'm relying more on the shoulder to generate some of that momentum. So here's the vertical twirl. I break it into three different components. There's momentum, which you get from the lifting of the arm, whether or not you want to bend the elbow uh, for comfort's sake or preference, doesn't matter. But this is giving the bachi the impetus to move, and then you have the fingers, actually the thumb, pushing and the fingers controlling where the bachi is going to rotate. And then you have completion, the, the continuation of the circle. Now, if I just do this, I'm doing the first and last component. Momentum, continuation. 
or completion. Right? Almost anyone can do this. Eventually, your shoulder is going to get tired. But it's important to have the completion because you can have rotation and your bocce will often wind up like this. And rather than making it go to where you want, if you complete, it will go to where you want without effort. And that's the key. The more you can do without effort, the easier this is going to be. And the more fluid it will be. So I'm momentuming. I know that's not a word, but it is now. Momentuming, controlling, completing. And that's, that's the key. I can do this in a circle over and over, but if I want, I can do it one and then kind of let it collapse, relax a bit. <sighs> Almost like a breath. <sighs> and don't worry if it doesn't feel or look as smooth as you want it. it you've got to practice this. This has to become natural before it becomes fluid. As long as you're getting all three components, you're on your way. You'll probably also find a sweet spot somewhere in this area where your bachi wants to twirl. Somewhere in there. I know if I try to twirl it too early, like down here, my elbow wants to move out and I'm out of alignment. If I twirl it too late, let's see. Hmm. I feel like my shoulder has to come up to compensate. But in this sweet spot, everything feels natural. I don't feel like I'm forcing or moving anything that doesn't want to move. As for the horizontal twirl, the good news is that it's the same twirl. It's the same exact mechanics. When you look at the vertical, you've got bachi coming towards the thumb side, going around the hand, and the wrist rotates. Horizontal. Your bachi is going towards the thumb side, around the hand, while the wrist rotates. There you go. The one minor difference is that uh, the cycle is a little different. The momentum is the same, the control is the same, but the continuation is a little different because you're not making a huge arc like you are with vertical. I'm momentuming, I'm controlling, and then the continuation ends pretty naturally because I don't have as much distance to cover. I also separate this into uh, roughly three different uh, levels, if you will. High, over the head, mid, around face, and low, around chest. These are rough, and I can go a little lower, I can go in the middle, just to give you an idea of what to practice. The high level is generally actually over the head. Reason for this is it's hard to do this high and far away. It's possible but often it's easier just to let it go over the head where you should be safe and then complete. And the completion, you want to make sure you complete it when it's high. This is also a little more difficult at this level. The mid and low levels are much more natural, much easier to execute, but you'll find going too low is difficult, too high is difficult, certain places are more difficult. The key here is practice. You'll find what works for you. You'll find what you have to adjust. In other words, just do it. When you watch someone skilled like Chieko, they're not just doing the vertical in one place. They're not just doing the horizontal in one place. They're doing it wherever they want. So you might see the vertical here or here, which is closer and in. You might see the horizontal here, but you might see it up here with the fingers splayed and the wrist bent, and it whips up here before it moves over. Whatever works, works. Now, this wouldn't be a tic tac taiko video if I didn't talk about the other hand. So your inside hand is going to do most of the twirling, regardless of which twirl it is. But your outside hand can do more than just hit if you practice the twirl on the outside hand. There's no reason why you shouldn't be able to do the same twirls on both sides, but you need to practice. Also, let's say the drum is on this side and this is my outside hand. Well, I can do more than just hit. Right? I can do the twirl and then strike, or I can loop over my head and strike. I call this a loop because if I keep everything fixed, if I don't let the wrist or bachi move, I can still do this. But if I'm twirling, I define a twirl as the bachi moving independently of what the hand is doing. So practice both sides because you never know when it will come in handy. Once you have your basic twirls, whether it's vertical or horizontal, you could do things to personalize it, to mix it up, to add a little bit of flavor. Let's take timing as an example. If I have my nice flowy horizontal twirl, 
Let's say I can count one, two, three, one, two, three. Why not try one, two, three, one, two, three, right? I hold it out longer or I wait to twirl it later. Or you start experimenting with that. That's one example. You can also play around with angles. We've covered vertical, we've covered horizontal, but why not a diagonal up or a diagonal down or even towards? Who knows what else there is to discover? And finally, you can try multiple twirls, more than one. So maybe on this, I got two, maybe I can pull out two here, maybe I can pull out two here. Three is hard, but you can try it. You can change the speed. Again, you don't know until you experiment. Let me end with this. Chieko Kojima has a phenomenal skill set, not just in Hanahachi Jo, but everything she undertakes. And just because I can kind of do one of the twirls and one of the things she does does not mean that I consider myself anywhere near her level, and nor do I claim that. I'm simply breaking down one very popular twirl and hoping that if you're interested that you could incorporate that into your playing. Whether you play Hachijo, whether you play Manane, whether you play something in front or something in front, if you are interested you can break down almost anything you see and apply it to your typo. And that's my hope. So if you like this video, let me know with a thumbs up. If you want to reach me, you can send some comments, questions below. And if you haven't subscribed, why not? So until next time, keep on twirling and be well.